It started with three special knocks. And then the door opens and he leads them down some stairs to another set of doors. And when the doors open, it's a dark room with a few candles lit. And once it's safe, the door is shut and immediately they fall down and they start praising and worshiping God. But there was one day where it wasn't a special knock. You know, it was a pounding and the doors being busted open by 20 to 30 Roman soldiers. And when they got down, they, they grabbed everyone, tied them up, put bags over their heads and led them away. And what seemed like a day or two, they're finally brought out. And when the bags are taken off, they look out and they see thousands of people in the Colosseum. And they, they know that they're thirsty for action. And while they're standing, they hear the proconsul say, deny Christ and say that Caesar is Lord and you will live. But if you don't, I'll release the lions. He said it again. Deny Christ and say that Caesar is Lord and you will live. But if you don't, I'll release the lions. And after a moment, one guy steps forward. He says, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and I will only praise him. And even if you release the lions and he doesn't save me, I will be okay. Another person steps forward and says, I agree with him. And another one says, I believe Jesus is the Lord, the one true God. And right there, the pro it says, released the lions. And, and, and I wanted to go, hey, all of a sudden, angels showed up and nothing happened to them, but that's not true. They gave their life that day. And I think like, why were they willing to give their lives? And it's because they knew the truth. Hey, Daily Dosers, my name's Travis Seibert, and right now we are in 2 John. And John is writing, and he loves this word, the truth. He says, to the chosen lady and her children, who I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all who know the truth, because of the truth which lives in us and will live with us forever. And he goes on to, to verse 4. He says, it has given me great joy to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as the Father commanded us. He loves talking about this idea of the truth. And what is that truth? That truth is that Jesus is God. Back in John 14, 6, John wrote that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus made a bold claim. He said, I am God. And he proved that he died on the cross for our sins, and then he rose again. He proved he's the only one ever to have brought themselves back to life. He is God. And they knew the truth. And then he keeps going in verse 7. says, Many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming to the flesh have gone the world and any such person, deceiver and the Antichrist. And he said, but here's the thing is, people are going to start trying to deceive you. And guess what? Even today, people are trying to deceive you. And he said, they are saying that Jesus is not God. And that's kind of the thing. I remember when I was just growing up as a youth pastor in ministry, and I was like, how do I save my, my students and even my own kids? How do I make sure they don't join maybe a cult or something that sounds like, because guess what? Even right now, there are so many variations of people trying to say this is what is true. And then I realized, it's who do they say Jesus Christ is? See, Jesus Christ is my God. He is God. Anybody else that says it's not, and it's like I started telling students, that is the indicator. Who do they say Jesus Christ is? And here's my thing is, who do you say Jesus Christ is? But just like in that story, how did those guys turn that belief into conviction they were willing to die for? Because that was the big thing is they were willing to die for it. And my question for you is, even if you believe Jesus Christ is Lord, how have you made that a conviction? Now, I'll be honest with you, you're probably not going to have to die for your faith. But I will say this, there are going to be times in your life where your faith is going to be tested, whether it's a lifeless marriage where you're not happy and you're like, maybe if I just had somebody else, whether it's a trial that's going on in your life, whether someone dies and you start to get angry at God. It's like when Larry says, when all hell breaks loose in your life, are you willing to change that belief into a conviction? My challenge for you is this, are you willing to turn that belief into conviction? And I don't know what that takes, but it might take you on a journey where you're searching for the truth because Jesus says he is the truth. He's the only way. Do you believe that? Dear God, I just want to thank you so much for these people watching today, Lord, that they would be turn that belief into conviction that Jesus Christ is the one and only true God. We love in your name. Amen.